Now, overnight, Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton have been named in court documents detailing people connected to disgraced financier and sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Nearly 950 pages of documents were released by a New York judge. Delighted to say that joining us now to discuss this royal bi biographer in front of the show. Tom Bauer, Tom, Happy New Year. Good morning to you, my friend. Um, we've been talking about this since 6 o'clock, 950 pages, so journalists still searching through all of this. Obviously, this side of the pond, Prince Andrew... Uh, that side of the pond, Bill Clinton, apparently 37 trips on Lolita Airlines to the island. Um, we make the point that nobody as yet has been charged with anything, but this is a particularly appalling look, my friend, isn't it? Well, someone has been charged and convicted, and that, of course, is Ghislaine Maxwell. Uh, yes, it is a bad look, especially for Prince Andrew, because he has always denied uh, having any sort of sexual contact with Epstein's girls, and I think even the group is sufficient to indict him for not telling the truth and not being totally candid. And, of course, for Bill Clinton, it really is tough. I mean, we all remember his experience with the intern Monica Lewinsky in the Oval Office, and he lied then and said he never had sex with that girl. And, of course, that was untrue. And so there's no reason to believe him now about his relationship with Epstein. But I think this is just the beginning of what could so much still come out. What I think is particularly interesting is Ghislaine Maxwell asking for help. She clearly didn't realise at that stage what she was getting into. And, of course, it got into her 20-year prison sentence. And what is very interesting and important from her point of view is that she's the only person who has been, con has been convicted in this saga. Everyone, all the men have got off uh, so far, except, of course, Epstein, who's dead. So I think it's the beginning of a very, very big smoking gun, which is going to explode when more and more of this stuff comes out. Couldn't agree with you more. Just for people tuning in, listening or watching, um, inside these 950-page documents, there is an email from Ghislaine Maxwell. I did that special on her and spoke to her inside the prison where she says, I am out of my depth. I'm not trying to make it out that she's been a scapegoat, but I am absolutely convinced. And some of the names this morning, Tom, Stephen Hawkins been mentioned in there, Michael Jackson, Donald Trump... Uh, David Copperfield, loads of people, some that you wouldn't even believe, not have been accused of anything, but to be associated with this, as Andrew has discovered, uh, it's dynamite, isn't it, my friend? Oh, I think it is, but I think it's particularly bad for Prince Andrew because, of course, he keeps on denying that he knew uh, Virginia Giffrey, the, the girl who, in the end, claims they had sex in London in Ghislaine Maxwell's uh, flat or uh, townhouse. So it's very bad for Prince Andrew. It's clearly appallingly bad for Bill Clinton, who has no credibility at all in these matters. And I think the problem really is that there are more names. I mean, the judge has only released these names. There clearly could be another witness, too, who hasn't yet uh, had her depositions released. Yeah, Tom, you, you talk about, for Prince Andrew, from his perspective, what this looks like. No actual new information, though, we don't think in, in these documents, but rehashing old allegations, all of which he's denied. Yep. This becomes a problem again. Has he learned, do you think, from how he's handled this in the past, which might well, change how he responds to this now? Well, if he hasn't learned, then he's more thick than we all think he is, because, <laughs> I mean, he lost his uh, title uh, of uh, HRH because of all this, and he lost a huge amount of money and lost all credibility and was kicked out of public life. So if he hasn't learned the lesson yet, I don't know what will teach him the lesson. No, I think today he must be very worried, as must indeed be the king, because as we saw at Christmas when we last spoke, I predicted that uh, Prince Andrew would indeed be on the Sandringham church visit on Christmas Day. I think uh, King Charles does want to rehabilitate him, but this makes it more and more difficult. Right, oh, you said. Talking about that, talking, just sorry, quickly, talking about that Christmas thing, one of the things that, that struck a lot of people, and I was off, was Fergie, uh, also invited to Sandringham. I mean, she was persona non grata. The Duke of Edinburgh once vaulted a fence to get away from her, but he's no longer with us, neither is the Queen. I just want to ask you about Charles, because, you know, there's no way in my mind that, that Prince Andrew can ever be rehabilitated. I read articles that said Fergie was invited to sort of you know, she keeps him on the straight and narrow, she's the one crutch that he's got. I actually disagree with you. I don't think Charles can rehabilitate him. I personally think that he's, he's concerned, not what Andrew knows, but that it would bring more to the royal family. I, I suspect he'd just hope he disappears, but I can't see that happening. I can't see him going and living in Scotland with Fergie, can you? It's not going to go away Absolutely. for the royals. 
No, absolutely not. Of course, he won't just stay in Windsor Lodge. He'll stay yeah. in London. Uh, the problem really is that King Charles is conflicted. Is his brother. He's worried what Andrew could do, and he he's not a man who actually wants to uh, exclude him, and that, of course, shows his, his weakness. Mm. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because many people say about Charles, he's a lovely man, but he doesn't want to, to be seen. He doesn't like confrontation, Tom, does he? He's not very good he with hates conf He hates confrontation. He wants people to do what he orders. He doesn't want people to do what they, he doesn't want them to do. In, in that case, for Andrew, what's sort of the best-case scenario? Yeah. Well, the best-case scenario is he would disappear, uh, but he's clearly working hard with Fergie's support to re-enter public life, and I hope that this latest thing in America, where he's named again, will convince the palace that there can be absolutely no question of Prince Andrew ever returning to public life, and if he appears once a year at Sandringham, so be it. But that must be the limit. Here's the million-dollar question, Tom, and I know you'll answer it, unlike many other people. Um... Ghislaine Maxwell, 20 years in prison, an email that says she was out of her depth uh, with what was going on. Uh, lots of big, famous names. Do you, and we have to be very careful because nobody has been accused of anything yet, can you see this getting to court? Can you see Andrew's name and the British monarchy being dragged still further through the mud because of these allegations further down the line? Well, I can, absolutely, because there'll be more allegations and more papers, and that, of course, is the danger for the palace. They do not know. They have no idea what more there is to be shown, what more bombs could explode. And Andrew isn't telling them, and because he's in self-denial. And that's the great problem for them. That's why uh, Prince Andrew really must be buried and forgotten. Tom, thank I you mean, very much. Garrison. No, listen, I, I, I completely get what you mean. Listen, in terms of many people have said what, what Tom means disappear is, is go to Scotland, live remotely in Scotland with Fergie and just don't darken our door again. Tom Bauer, always a pleasure. Thank you so much indeed, my friend, for being on. Really, really appreciate it.